Do you have one of these? It's a standard wire bristle grill cleaning brush. It's the best selling accessory in outdoor cooking. And yet this brush sends a person to the hospital every three days. In 2011, a man showed up in an emergency room suffering from severe abdominal pain. A CT scan was done and a small wire was found in his small intestine. It was surgically removed and the next day he went home. What they surmised was that a bristle from his grill cleaning brush had fallen off and the steak he ate that night had carried that bristle into his stomach. There are 1,200 little bristles on this brush. It's one of the best selling units. It's even recommended by a number of websites that, well, they know about as much about grilling as I do about microbiology. These bristles, well, they're needle sharp. They're very thin. And if you bend one out and just kind of work it around a bit, it'll break off after about oh, 20 seconds or so. Now imagine cleaning your grill again and again with that brush, with them bending back and forth. It's easy to imagine how, we, how these fall out. A brush like this one, well, it's got over 100,000 bristles on it. And that's a lot of potential for injury. In 2012, a study was published finding that this happens about 130 times a year in the United States. Although the authors of that study acknowledged that they probably weren't counting all of the cases. It could be substantially higher. We just don't really know. It's kind of up to the hospitals to report that they suspect a wire bristle from a grill cleaning brush was the culprit. It also doesn't count all of the people who got one of these jabbed in their tongue and just never ended up in a hospital. But it seems like such an easy problem to solve. Unfortunately, it didn't turn out that way. After that study came out in 2012, the United States Senate even suggested that, well, something had to be done. They charged the Consumer Product Safety Commission in the United States with finding a solution. Similarly, a study was done by Health Canada. Now, they went out and they asked the industry what could be done, manufacturers of these sorts of products. The recommendation that they came back with is, well, we want to make sure that the bristles aren't just coming out. You see, sometimes in a grill brush like this, the bristles are put into a plastic or wooden handle and just glued in place. That glue dissolves and disintegrates because of high temperature cleaning and moisture. But that was actually never the problem. The problem isn't that the bristles just fall out. The problem is that they break off. And there's not much you can do about that. You can't just make a wire bristle brush cheaply that's going to be made of a kind of wire that isn't ever going to break. So the consumer was told, if your wire brush isn't looking so good, if it's really dingy and dirty, throw it out. Buy another one. Better yet, they suggested, buy something that doesn't have wire bristles. But, well, for four bucks, what are you going to do? You need a new grill cleaning brush? You find these all over the place. Every hardware store, department store, anywhere that sells grills, they have these. They're just sitting in bins, which is also kind of part of the problem. You see, when this one is manufactured, it gets a little sticker on the side here. And then the whole unit, without any type of protection, is thrown into a box. It's shipped halfway around the world. And that's taken out of that box and thrown in a display case. It's already damaged. It's already beaten up. There's already bent bristles. I've looked over and over again at the wire bristle brushes in the grill sections of hundreds of stores. And I always find bent bristles. So that's not the answer. So a number of people since then have come up with alternatives. This brush uses an all-natural fibers, plant-based. They're stiff, not as stiff as the wires, but, well, they tend to break down. You can just kind of sit here and do this for a minute, and you can see the dust rising out of it. It's just because it's plant-based, and it's going to disintegrate, which means the bristles break off even easier. Not as big a problem if you swallow this. Not appetizing, but it's probably not going to put you in the hospital. 
so not a great solution. Now Charbroil decided that they could come up with a brush that didn't use wire bristles, but was still a brush. This one uses a ceramic embedded polymer, or basically a kind of fiberglass. Problem with it is high temperatures tend to melt the bristles. So this is what they call their cool, clean technology. You clean your grill while it's cold. Well, that means that the grease, and the fats, and the food particles, well, they're actually harder to get off when it's cold than when it's hot. It's a good solution. It's not a bad idea. It shows promise, but it's not ideal. Now there's a number of products kind of like this one. This is all steel. Nothing's going to fall off of it. You clean the rods on the grate one at a time. Well, it's kind of tedious. If you have a large grill, you're going to be at it for a while. Plus, what if you don't have round bars on your cooking grates? What if they're more of a square or what if they're too big or too small for this space? It's not going to work perfectly. So there's no standardization of cooking grates. It's a good idea. It doesn't really go too far. Now one of my favorite solutions is actually this. It's a wooden paddle. This one in particular is made by a company called The Great Scrape. They kind of came up with this idea. You can get in there and you can really scrape off the cooking grates with a material that doesn't damage porcelain coatings or anything like that. When you buy this, this is straight across the top here. And as you use it, the cooking grates kind of notch grooves into it, which means it can now wrap around those cooking grates more and more. So the more you use this, the better it gets, the more effective it becomes. I love these. If I'm going to be living with a grill for a while, I usually buy one of these just for that grill. I mean, that is kind of one of the issues. Once it's conformed to the specific grates of one grill, it doesn't work as effectively on a different one. But it's a good solid hardwood. It lasts a very long time. And the high temperature cleaning that you do on the grill actually hardens the wood, making it more and more durable as time goes by. You can throw a little butcher block oil on it, keep it from cracking. And it'll last for years. I mean, I've had units I've used for a decade. Now this brings us kind of to the ultimate solution. You want a brush that's, well, still a brush, but doesn't have bristles. Now I like this shape. This is a great shape for cleaning your grill. It gets from the front to the back very easily. You can really get in there, you put a lot of force on it, and you can cover the entire cooking surface without those weird scrapers you're actually not supposed to use on your cooking surface and uh, without an odd block shape. It's very wide. You can cover a lot of uh, the grill surface in a short period of time. And what this does is, yeah, it uses a wire, but it's a heavy gauge wire. It's a very strong wire and it's wound in this double helix spiral pattern. It's all one piece of wire running through here and it's uh, kind of spring-like and it bends, it moves, it's kind of got a fluidity to it that'll conform to your cooking grates, get around the sides of them, and clean it off quite effectively. So this is actually a really good solution. This one comes from a company called Brush Tech. They make all kinds of brushes. I mean, if you wanted to become a chimney sweep, you would buy your chimney brooms from them because they make every kind of brush you can think of except hair brushes. Now they have a lot of different designs, a lot of different models of these, um, including something like this, which has been used a number of times um, by me, and it's uh, also got a very traditional brush shape to it. But the great thing about them is they're very durable. Soak them in soapy hot water for a little bit or just throw them in your dishwasher. They'll clean up really well. It's a kind of solution that works because it's very much like a brush. It works just like it, but, well, there's no fine little bristles to fall off. I understand the appeal of these, and that's largely just because they're cheap. Four bucks here, looking at more like 15 here. But, you know, there's an economics of scale at play here, too. If we got rid of wire bristle brushes and we went to alternatives, and not just this one, but a number of viable options, the 
paddle and some of the individual bar cleaning brushes. Well, the economics of scale will make them cheaper. The more that are made, the more that are sold, the more reasonable the price will become. So there's no real trade-off here. I mean, what are we losing? We're losing wire bristles being swallowed by people. And it's not just the griller, it's their family and their friends and their guests that are at risk here. And you can do a lot to prevent this from happening. You can only clean after you've cooked and then you can wash out the inside of your grill to make sure there's no wire bristles in there. You can do a lot of inspection, but let's be honest. Do we wanna put that kind of effort and time into it? No. We wanna be able to go out, preheat our grill, run something over it to clean it off and get cooking. That's the kind of solution that we need. Now I know I'm kind of getting up on a soapbox here. This is the sort of issue we've known about for a long time, but it's just, it's not being handled. And it's, being hand and it's not being handled for one reason. And the reason is just laziness. And there's a lot of companies out there who are invested very heavily in grilling. They don't need the negative PR. People don't need to end up in the hospital because they've swallowed a piece of wire. And the industry doesn't need those perpetual stories run every summer on local news channels talking about the person who did end up in the hospital, talking about the dangers of grilling, the dangers of the backyard barbecue. That doesn't help the industry. It doesn't help the consumer. So why can't we just stand up and say enough is enough? So the consumer, I say, buy something different. Stop buying wire bristle brushes. You'll make your house hold safer. And you'll hopefully send a message. I mean, if enough of us said no more, well, these wouldn't get made anymore. If you're a retailer, please take them off your shelves. You're hurting people. You're hurting your own customers. You know, and that doesn't look good. You really want to sit there and say, well, for expediency and because we want something that's really cheap, we're willing to put our own customers at jeopardy. And for the manufacturers, come on, you've known about this problem. I've talked to dozens of you. Your own trade organization has basically come back and said it's not an issue to them because, well, it's the consumer's fault. Great. Blame the victim. Good job. You're being cowards, plain and simple. All we need is for one big company to stand up and say, hey, we're going to get rid of the wire bristle brush. We're going to make a PR campaign about it. And we're going to shame everyone else into doing what we've done. So please share this video with those people. Maybe, maybe they'll get the point. Maybe they'll realize, oh, well, you know, 130, 200, 300, who knows? How many trips to the emergency room it's going to take before they actually just stand up and say okay enough is enough this is a little thing but it's one that can be so easily resolved so all i'm asking once and for all ban the bristle and get rid of these because someone's going to die and that's inexcusable